Hello, in this video I'm gonna test our project on a real server. As you can see I've already made a few changes in the client project. I changed the UI and I used a bunch of different assets in the project so I cannot uh, share the source code with you now. I've also made a few changes in the server project but I can share the server project with you. So to fix any possible error that might crash our server I've created this script called retry so when a method fails instead of crashing the server it's just gonna repeat the process and if we go to the database I've also put different methods in different categories so let's take a look at these methods for example here when the authenticate player async is getting called first it's gonna create a task and inside that task it's gonna use the retry to call authenticate player async which is this one and it will return whatever value that this function is going to return but if calling this function encounters any errors it is going to wait 0.1 second and it's gonna call the function one more time and if it fails again then it's just gonna crash the server so I'm gonna share the source code of the server with you I changed a few things but it will work with your version of the client the version that you've downloaded in the video part 34 here I'm gonna put this file in the description let me extract it here first and if we take a look you'll see that this is the client for part 34 and this is the server with the new changes applied to it so you already probably have that client but the server is new and as I said there's nothing new has been added to the project it's just I created a retry functionality and reduced the possibility of the server crashing over in a small error so with that being said let's just delete that okay now let's get down to the business I've already rented a server, so this is the server credentials. They gave me an IP, a username, and a password. They usually give you a port too, but in my case, they didn't give me one. So if they give you a port, the port is usually with this sign here and the port number, whatever number it is. This is going to be your IP. So to connect to the server, you need to open a software in your Windows, which is called Remote Desktop Connection. You can just search for it. Here it is, Remote Desktop Connection. I'm using Windows 7, but Windows 10, Windows 8 do have this software. It's a default installed within your Windows. So you can just open that up. So I've already entered my IP address, but for you, if the service provider that you've rented the server from gave you a port as well, for example, let's say port 666, whatever, you're gonna copy the entire IP and the port together in this format and paste it here, okay? You just paste it here in this area. Okay, but they didn't give me a port, so I'm just gonna remove that. And I'm gonna click connect. It's gonna pop up a window asking you a username and a password. I've already logged in my server once, so by default it just has the username for me. But uh, if you connecting to your server for the first time, you're probably gonna enter the username as well. The username usually is administrator, so I'm gonna enter my password as well. So let me close that, don't save it. You can even check or remember my credentials and you can click OK. It's gonna ask you a security question. You can just click yes and also you can check this. So the next time you're gonna connect is not gonna ask you this question again. So I'm gonna click yes. So here we go, I am connected to the server. So what is this server? This server is actually another computer that I am connected to it and took control of this computer. This computer could be in anywhere else in the world. It could be in the United States, it could be in Canada. It depends on which country you're gonna purchase the server from. So as you can see, this is my own computer. So let's actually go to my device information. I'm just gonna right click here, properties. And as you can see, I have eight gigabyte of RAM and this is on my computer information. Let me just close that. And if we go to the server and repeat the same process, let's go and check out the server information here in this PC. And let me click properties. You'll see this also has 8 gigabytes of RAM, but the processors are different. 
as you can see the processors are different the computer name is different so basically that's a whole different computer that I'm connected to it and let's maximize this by the way you can maximize this minimize this and close your connection with the server so let me close this usually when they give you the server it's just a brand new windows so you'll have to install google chrome yourself i've already installed the google chrome or any other browser internet explorer is really sucks i don't like it so you can even install firefox if you want just something that you can actually work with and then you can uh, go to the internet download whatever you want <laughs> you have internet access on that computer as well so you can just uh, type zamp or any other local host mysql provider and install and download it i've already downloaded the zamp and installed it so let me go and find it here it is in my computer in drive c zamp so let's open this up and i am going to start the services and i'm going to click admin here we go this is our mysql and by default as i said before in my previous videos the credentials for mysql when you install it for the first time is usually localhost for the server root for the username and empty password so let's close this so this is our brand new server let's just minimize this so this is our own computer so now we want to publish our server project so to do that you're gonna open your server project this is our server project and this is our scripts so first of all right click on this area here the name of your project not on the solution in here okay when you right click on that you hit properties and you can just go to the build and change the configuration to release okay you don't have to do that but you that's just something you can do let's just close this and while this area is selected I'm just gonna go to the build click publish real-time networking server or any project name you've chose uh, you're gonna click publish and it's gonna ask us a target we're gonna select folder we're gonna select next select folder again click next and here we need to specify a folder location let's hit browse I'm just gonna choose my desktop let's actually create a new folder for it so I'm gonna put it in this new folder click OK so it's gonna save the published version of my server in C desktop new folder and I'm gonna click finish it is going to create a published profile for me I'm gonna click show all settings so the configuration uh, you choose you put it on release even if it was, it was on debug you choose release because we want to release our server the deployment mode make sure you put it on self-contained okay you could put it on framework dependent but that might not work okay you know you could actually try that you could actually first publish it with this option available and if your server failed to run then uh, get a publish with self-contained so the, the difference is the volume of your server project is going to be a lot higher in this self-contained and it's going to take a long time to be published but it's safer it's uh, it's guaranteed that it will run independent from the framework okay so I'm gonna choose self-contained you can also choose different uh, targets and I'm gonna click Save now I'm gonna hit publish and I will wait for the project to be published okay as you can see it says published successful and uh, if we go ahead and check out the folder we created you'll see that this is our server so let's find the exe here it is real-time networking server and if we run this you'll see that it will open our server so let's close that and by the way make sure you choose a database name here in the scripts database and uh, let's go ahead and check this out here it is the name of database i'm not going to change the name but if you intend to change the name of your mysql database on the server make sure you change this value first then you're gonna publish your project so our work is done with the server i'm just gonna close this completely and this is our server now so now we need to copy this to our server how to do that very easy i'm just gonna click copy and i'm gonna open my server and click paste that's it it's just gonna copy 
the project onto my server here we go i'm just gonna bring it here let's actually maximize this and let's rename this to clash server or any name you want to choose for it so we brought the published version of our server now it's time for our database so let's go to our own computer and go to the database i'm just gonna go to my own database I'm not going to delete the accounts and buildings and the reports and other stuff because I want to keep these accounts. But if you want to have a brand new server with no accounts and no buildings, you just can go ahead and delete the contents of the accounts and battles and buildings, chat messages, uh, join requests, search, wars, attacks, and uh, units, okay, spells, and, and verification codes. You can delete the contents, but I just want to keep them all. So let's go to the export, and I'm just going to click export. Here we go. This is my sql file let's open that and i'm just gonna copy this and guess what we're gonna go to the server and we are going to paste it here on the desktop that's it so let's go to the browser go to the database create a new database and make sure you name it the exact value that you chose in your server projects database script so this is the name of the database i am just gonna go with utf8 bin so let's create this so i'm going to select the database hit import let's choose the file in the desktop and click import now as you can see we have this database so i'm just gonna close that and let's delete that and i'm gonna open my server but actually before we do that there is an important step that you need to do here because if you don't do it your server project will probably is not going to work so you're gonna open the search and search for allow app through firewall so you select this option and this window is going to pop up for you it's in control panel system and security windows defender firewall and allowed apps so you need to allow your server project through firewall so to do that we're gonna click allow another app i'm gonna hit browse choose desktop clash of whatever and the runtime project this one i'm gonna select that and click add okay and remember if you rename this folder or move this folder you need to repeat the process again so now let's go to the server and let's open our server project here we go our server project is open on port 555 of course you can change the port number as well as i mentioned if the server provider gave you an ip with a port you can use that port too or you can use any custom port that you want so this is our server project running on an entire different computer than our own and this computer is going to be on 24 7. it's always going to be on and it's always going to be connected to internet and all the users all across the world can connect to this so i'm just gonna close the server and let's close this extra stuff and let's delete that as well and as you can see i have nothing open but the client so there is no visual studio open in my computer so there is no server here the server is actually on another computer somewhere else in the world it could be hundreds of miles away from me so let's select the server actually i am going to choose this ip let's copy that you don't need the username and password for the client that's just for you to connect to your server it's not for the client project do not enter any of those two values inside your client project so let's open the client project i am going to go to the settings and i'm gonna replace the ip address so this is the ip address of my server and i'm not going to change the port I, i'm going to enter the same port i entered in my server so this is the settings i've changed it now let's start the project and see how this goes here we go and this is it we are connected to our server and it works just fine and as you can see i have changed the ui and uh, made it look a little better let's test a few things first of all let me see if i can place a barracks and maybe an army camp so let's go ahead and place the army camp as well 
I'm just gonna instant build this and let's train some units. I'm just gonna train some soldiers. So I will wait for them to be trained. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the settings. And as you can see, I've made a few changes in the UI. And unfortunately, I cannot share the source code with you because that would be the violation of the copyright rules. Now let's go and try to attack someone here in the multiplayer. You can click next and let's place some units here. And as you can see, I've already added the animation to the units and uh, I used a bunch of 3D models I've downloaded from internet and uh, it actually looks pretty nice. So let's just surrender for now. I don't want to continue this battle. And now if I go ahead and get an Android build for this and install that on any phone, it's just gonna connect to the server and the game is just gonna work so this is how you can publish your game so this is probably is going to be the last video of course i might publish a few other videos in the future when i test this on a, a real android market and i will test this for a large group of players to see how this performs okay and i will share that those reports with you that might happen sometime in the future so for a while you're probably not gonna see any more videos regarding this project but for now i just consider this project finished so thank you for staying with me this long please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and i appreciate your support in the comments i wish you the best luck and thank you for watching